reality discrete or continuous? Oh man. All right. Uh, so so yeah. So so people have. Um, I guess you know the debate about whether uh, the world is discrete or continuous goes back to the ancient Greeks. Uh, so, uh, and, and actually, uh, uh, modern physics has an enormous amount to say about this question, uh, while still, you could say, not unequivocally resolving it in one direction or the other, right? So, uh, just to start with quantum mechanics, so, uh, um, you know, most of the examples of uh, quantum mechanical systems that we uh, think about, certainly in my field of quantum computing, um, you know, it, uh, are, are systems that we call finite dimensional. That is, they are characterized by a finite list of numbers. Okay, uh, uh, but but those numbers are uh, complex numbers. They're called the amplitudes of the system, and uh, they and, and and there's a whole continuum of those numbers. Right? So you could say, well, look, you know, I have uh, continuous parameters in my system. That means that it's continuous, right? Okay, well, here's the problem. We never actually observe these numbers, okay? These numbers, uh, the way that they enter into our experience is that we use them to calculate probabilities, okay? So when you look at the system, there's only a finite number of possible outcomes that you could see. Like if I measure a quantum bit, a qubit, you know, it could be, before I look, it could be in a superposition of zero and one states. So it has some complex amplitude for being zero, and it has some other complex amplitude for being one. But now when I look at it, it collapses to one or the other. So for example, it's just zero or it's one. Okay, so I get a discrete set of possible outcomes, right? So then you say, oh, well then it sounds like uh, the system is discrete. Right? Well, like it was continuous before I looked, but then it's discrete after I look. Right? So, um, so, so quantum mechanics kind of, um, you know, munges together, you know, a continuous aspect and a discrete aspect in, I think, a way that no one was predicting before quantum mechanics came along. Right? Now, it's true that if, if we, you know, one can formally talk about quantum systems where a measurement would have infinitely many possible outcomes, right? And in fact, the uh, standard examples of quantum systems that the physicists study, like a particle, you know, with a position or a momentum, uh, are, are, are such systems. Okay, they do live in what's called an infinite dimensional state space, where you would need infinitely many uh, complex numbers to characterize their state. And I think if those systems really occurred in the fundamental description of physics, then uh, there would be no dis real dispute that those at least are continuous, right? And that therefore nature were continuous. Okay, but um, there's now evidence that, that those sorts of systems cannot. Uh, keep appear in our most fundamental description of nature, which would be a quantum theory of gravity. Okay, so um, what emerged from the work of the late uh, Jacob Bekenstein and, and others, including Stephen Hawking, you know, from the 1970s onward, uh, was uh, this principle that uh, actually I mentioned earlier in the interview that a bounded system seems to be describable by only a, a finite number of quantum bits or qubits, right? Which means by a finite dimensional system, a finite list of amplitudes, uh, which would, and um, Furthermore, in 1998, it was discovered that there's this dark energy, which means, you know, the, the universe is expanding at an exponential rate, which means that we can only receive signals from so far away and no further, right? Signals that are further away from that are just receding away from us, you know, uh, faster than light, basically. So, um, so it looks like the, if the dark energy really is a constant, uh, is a cosmological constant, then the whole observable universe would be uh, um, a, uh, a bounded system, which would, you know, and then if we believe in this Bekenstein principle, then that would be described by a finite dimensional uh, state space, which means that any measurement that could ever be made would have only a finite number of possible outcomes, and in that sense, nature would be discrete. On the other hand, before we looked, it would be described by this wave of amplitudes which form a continuum.